We're going to be looking at how we can loop through objects and how we can loop through arrays. So objects in JavaScript come with some methods that you can make use of, and they contain properties of either the object entries. You can also get the keys or the values. So what these are going to return back, they're going to return back the object within an array structure. And then as you've got an array, there's a number of ways to loop through the contents of that item. And one of them is using the for loop because for arrays, we know we get a property value of length. So we can use that in a regular for loop and loop through all the items using the value of the indicator as the index value in order to output the value into the console. There's also a for in loop. So this is another way that you can get the items from the array and iterate through them using the array and then setting the index value. And this is going to be returning back index values for they're very similar to what we saw with the for loop. There's also a for each. So this is a method and JavaScript arrays have a lot of different useful methods in order to interact with the contents contained within the array. So one of them is the for each. And this allows us to loop through and extract out the item, the index, or array. The index and array are optional, and then we can output the results into the console. There's a, some examples of a combination of both of them. Here we're looping through the values. Here we're looping through the entries in one statement using the for each, and that's outputting those results. We've also got an object that's a, an array that contains multiple objects that are structured the same way with the same key names so that we can iterate through the array and using that same value for the key, we can output the results. So we've got an example of how we're outputting the last name, how we're outputting the first name of all of the items that are contained within the friends array. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Let's explore the various ways that we can iterate through the content both in objects and within arrays. So first off, we're going to create an object give it a variable name, and then add some content into the object. So we can just add in a few properties with uh, some values that are associated with it. So the key names so that we can retrieve back the values within the object. And we're going to output them into the console. So we want to loop through the object. We can use a for loop in JavaScript in order to loop through the object. And we can go through all of the object entries. So selecting the object entries, if we do a console log and use the object keyword and select entries, this allows us to select the object entries and then we have to identify the object within the parameters of what we want to get the entries from. And we get this type of output that we see within the console. So we get all of the entries, uh, first name, last, and then the value, and then the ID and the value that's associated with it. So essentially it builds it into an array and then the JavaScript uses the array that we can iterate through. So in order to make use of that object, we can return it back directly within a key and a value. And then we can use those keys and values in order to do something with the code, in order to do something with the data that's contained within the object. So we've got the key and the value, the same structure that we see within the array output of the console and then using the keyword of, and then that same structure where we're using the object and entries and returning back the object contents from the entries. And because this is a for, we're gonna be looping through the content. What I'll do is I'm gonna update the view for the word wrap so that we can see the entire statement with of the code. So this is the one statement. The block of code is indicated by the curly brackets. So now we can loop through the object and output the results. We can select the object and using the bracket notation, add in the key within the bracket notation. And this is again coming the same way that we've got it within the array. So what's gonna happen when we loop through the for loop, we're gonna be assigning the value of the key, which is first, last, and ID to the variable within the const array of key, and then the values being associated with the value. So we need to specify the key that we do want to retrieve. And then we want to select the value for it. And what we'll do is we'll console log out this part of the object. And we can also console log the key so that we can better break apart what's happening behind the scenes as the JavaScript code is going through the values. So as it goes through the values, 
The first item that it has for a key is going to be this key, which is the key that we have. So that's the first key there. And within objects, there's no order. It's actually automatically setting them within an order. So there's no preset order for the items within the object as it loops through, as it would be with an array. So an array always has the predefined order because it's indexed based. So there's the value associated with the key so that we can retrieve back using the bracket notation. And once again, the value, the key, and then the value key and value. So we can output those values. We can also update the values as we're looping through. We can select the key and then assign a new value to that key. So now if I output the object one into the console, all of the properties are going to have a value that's going to be the same value because it's created that as we were looping through those objects. So that's how you can reassign the objects. There's also the object keys. So if you just want to get an array listing of the keys, you can do that. And you can also get the object values. And once it's within an array structure, then you can make use of that content in a number of ways looping through the content. So now let's get into arrays. With objects, we are fairly limited to the way that we can select the content within the object. And with arrays, they provide us a whole lot more flexibility with what we can do with the content that's contained within the array. So setting up an array. And as we see, when we bring the object data into an array, then we can also make use of it as it would be within an array. So I'll create actually a few arrays and they're gonna be actually based on the object data that's being returned back. And so this will give us three arrays. And then this last one will just construct ourselves. So it can have a number of values. And of course, we just comma separate the values. And I'll use the same values that we have within the object and just add in a few extra ones there so that we have some other items within the array. Let's list out the arrays. So what I'll do is I'll do a console clear to clear the current console log. And then we'll log out each one of the arrays and we'll see what we've got for the arrays. So that's the first array. And the first two arrays are actually coming from the object data. And the last array is the one that we've created. So we've got the first one, which was using the keys, return back all of the object keys. Second one was the values, return back all of the object values. So this is different than the entries. If you don't need either the keys or the values, then you can opt for this type of statement in order to pull out either the keys or the values if that's what you're looking to get out of the object. And then the last array is just the array that we created. So for arrays, there's a number of things that we can do to loop through the array contents. The first one is using the array property of length. So we do have a length and we can create a for loop to loop through the contents of the array. So we'll try that one. And there's actually a number of ways that we can loop through the contents. So this one, we're looping through the array three length till we hit the array thing length property, or this is the same as doing five. But when we use the property value, then if we add any items to the array or if we remove them from the array, then this will also update as we're looping through. So we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna have any issues because at this point when the code is encountered and the for loop is there, it does have the length. And so it is able to link through, loop through and select each one of the items within the array. So the array values in order to return them back, you can just specify the array and use the index value in order to retrieve back the value that's associated within the array. So this is essentially a for loop that allows us to output all of the contents of the array. So the objective is when you do have data is to get the data out of these objects and make use of it within the code. So just as we saw with the for of loop, we can also use a for in loop. And this is ideal for arrays where we can pull out the index value using in and then specify the array that we want to iterate through. So this will produce an index value for the items within the array and returning back the index value. And now we can use the index value to output the item from the array. So if I update this to be I in array three and I is gonna be representing the index value, that way we can retrieve out the values and we can also have the index values as well. So I'm just comma separating it on the console. So that gives us all of the index values. And we can also get the same structure 
in the for loop where we're looping through and the i is representing the index value and that's outputting it there within the console. There is one difference here is that the i within the for loop here is going to be counted as a number whereas the i here is counted as a data type of a string which in most cases it doesn't matter because JavaScript can do the dynamic type conversion, but that's just something to watch out for. And you can see the differences as it's being output within the console that the for in loop is gonna produce a black output within the console of Chrome. And the for loop itself is gonna produce a blue value. And that's representing that that value is gonna be numeric. One of my favorite ones, and that's the for each loop. So this is actually a method and arrays in JavaScript come with a number of different methods and these are very useful because they provide you a way to iterate through and make use of the content. So the for each loop can pick up number of parameters. So you can pick up the item information. Uh, you can also pick up the index value and then you can get the array itself and make use of it as you're iterating through the content. So you can use the index or the array, and these are optional values. And in most cases, you're not gonna see the need for the index or the array, but it is available if you do need to make use of it. So what this will do is this is gonna output the item, which is gonna be the value from the array. So the, whatever we've got in the array is the first value, Lawrence. So that's gonna be the first item that's output. And then it's gonna loop through. Uh, the next value that's output is gonna be the index value. And then lastly, let's take a look at the array. So the array is just going to be reproducing the original array. And as it iterates through, we're going to get the full array each iteration. And we get the value of the item and the index value. And we can see that the index value here, uh, item with index value of three is going to be the fourth item within the array. And there's that full array being output. So this is the one that I most commonly will use. Uh, in most cases, it's usually the best way to loop through because you get the value right away within a variable name, and then that way you can make use of the variable name. Let's uh, look at some combinations where we want to loop through directly for all of the object values. So we can use this as the iterator using the for each loop and loop through all of the items within the array the same way that we just did with the arrays themselves. And that means that if we want to output the value, I'm gonna just update this to val and get rid of the rest of the contents here because we don't really most of the time need it. And of course it's there if you do need it. Uh, so this is one way that you could loop through all of the object, get all of the values from the object. Uh, if you wanted to loop through the object ent entries, so you can pull it out into a separate array and then loop through the array, or you can do it this way where you're just doing it within the one statement and looping through the object entries, just as we did over here, we saw that it produced an array and that array is something that we can then use as we're outputting the values. So let's see what we get for the values for the last one. And these are gonna be the arrays with the two values. The first value in the array is gonna represent the key. The second one is actually the value of the item in the object. So you can use this type of structure uh, where you're specifying the value, which is gonna be the array where the contents are contained and selecting the key and the value, and then output the contents into the console that way. So that represents the key and that's the value that we're outputting. So doing it within one statement. There's also, if you have an array that's, uh, or an object that contains an array, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in the array three into object one as an array. So let's output that and we'll do a console clear to clear out the current contents of the console, selecting the object and let's add a value to it. So that's gonna be the property with the key name of key value of eight RR. And we're gonna be adding in the array into that it will log out the results of object one. And now we've got our array has been nested within the object. So if we want to loop through the object and we want to loop through the contents that are contained within the object, let's try that out. And the first thing that we need to do is select the object using its variable name, which is obj1. 
And then we want to select the property either using the dot notation or the bracket notation in order to select the array. And once we do have an array, then at that point we can loop through and we can return back the results of the content that's contained in there. And let's say we just want to do a console log. So console log each one of the elements that's contained within the array. So that way we can loop through the items of an array contained within an object. And a lot of times when you do encounter JSON, there's going to be a blend of objects nested within arrays and arrays nested within objects. And specifically, when you do get multiple items for the results for an object, this is something you're going to encounter quite frequently. Uh, so let's create one more item. And this uh, is going to be an array, but it's going to contain a bunch of objects. And this is typically done this way where you've got an object and we've got a first name and we keep the structure the same for the objects so that way this makes it a lot easier to loop through the items within the object and uh, do another one for last and we'll create some separate items here so if we want it to loop through all of the objects and if we've got the same key names first and last that's going to make it easy for us to identify the objects that are contained within the array and then also make use of the data. So comma separate the objects so that we can add multiple objects into the array. And then let's update the last names or the first names and the last names so that we end up with three different people within the friends array. And they're all going to have different names so the objective is to loop through and get the contents of the friends array. Let's do a console clear. We'll clear out the current content of the console and we'll output the friends array into the console. So there's the friends array in the console. It's an array structure, so it does have a length. And each one of the items within the array is structured the same way. So these are all objects. So if we want to output just the last name of the items within the friends array, let's make that selection where we're selecting friends and then using the for each to loop through each one of the friends and then pulling out the variable as friend. And within the console, we're selecting the friend and only getting the last name. So again, dot, dot notation or bracket notation will do and pulling out the last names. And this way we can list all of the last names of the friends. Uh, we can also do the same, of course, for the first names or any one of the other items that are contained within the array. And this is why when you are constructing arrays that are going to hold multiple objects uh, and you do want to be able to iterate and loop through them, make sure that the structure of the objects is the same. And what I mean by structure is that they have the same keys and the key, va the key values are the ones that are changing. And Generally, when you are trying to extract the data out, then you're going to be selecting those key values. So go ahead and try it out for yourself to get more comfortable with extracting and iterating through the data contained within both objects and arrays. And you're going to be ready to move on to the next lesson.